three, two, uno. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to this episode of the Lucy Goosey Podcast. I am the delicious Lucy Licious. Joining me today, as always, my lovely co-host Stephen. Hi. All right. How how's uh everything going? Everything is going really, really good. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's going up. It's going all right. Actually, um, we we uh, found out that I might have ADHD due to freaking baby formula, but that's in the works. There's yeah. A huge lawsuit going on right now. Um, for people fed certain foods, and <laughs> they found lead in it, and they're blaming ADHD and autism and stuff on it. Have you seen the thing with the Bang Energy and Monster Energy, like, filing lawsuits against each other recently? No. Oh, it's been, it's been crazy. It's all about Bang Energy's quote-unquote super creatine. Super creatine? Yep. gosh. You know, creatine can give you gynoclamastia. You shouldn't just drink that shit willy-nilly. Yeah, but, um, if you're, like, doing a lot of bodybuilding it's good for you it's good and it's pretty essential um but in doses. they're they're basically saying that they like reinvented create creatinine yeah whatever creatine is it creatinine, creatinine or creatine creatine holds water creatinine i hear is pretty important for working out i don't know what it does i'm pretty sure it's the same thing is it yeah i think it's just like people pronounce it differently Creatine, creatine and creatine. Creatine, creatine. They're two different ones. But I have no idea. I know nothing about it. So. Yeah, we'll have to. I'm sorry. Dude, I don't know. It's just so funny because if you look at the CEO for Bang Energy, he looks like he's the CEO for Bang Energy, is all I'm going to do. Let me see this guy. Like, he wears, like, suits that only kids that were in, like... People that were, like, kids in 1990 would have thought were cool. He has, like, the worst, like, gold (laughs) chains you've ever seen. I see that! (laughs) I think it's... It's It's so funny, like... The most recent video he posted on his YouTube, he's wearing, like, this giant floral suit with, like, a big bang energy chain. <laughs> I see it. I definitely see that one. It says, see, uh, bang energy CEO, unbeatable cringe. Yeah, Jack Owak is his name. Jack, Jack Owak. Jack Owak. Reminds me of the Jabberwocky. Dude, that's, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I hope Monster wins. I don't like Bang. Bang sucks. Well, well they have lawsuits Monster filed. The freaking... They have them filed against each other. Um, oh. Bang's, oh, nice. Bang's... The one that's filed against Bang is really related to their super creatine. Uh, the one that Bang filed against uh, Monster Energy is about Monster Energy being linked to heart attacks and uh, cardiomyopathy, I think, is the what it was. Something... It, basically, we, we all know how caffeine works, right? You take too much caffeine, it can cause heart problems because it's a stimulant, it raises your heart rate. Okay. Dorama. Tisk tisk. I'll never forget that commercial. But um Yeah, so the the crazy part about it is Bang Energy has more caffeine in it than Monster. So I'm surprised they went that approach because Bang Energy has probably had just caused about just as much uh problems with people's hearts. For sure. Honestly, I kind of blame people for over drinking them 
because we all knew they were terrible, but you know what they're going to say. It, there's no warning label on it. It doesn't say consume one, two. Well, it, it literally does. It does? It, well, then, that's what the well, serving okay. size thing is for. The serving well, size it's, it's, is it's you are serving. supposed to consume this amount. If you consume more than that, sure, go for it. Why I not? I swear to God, I bet you there's two servings in the can. Yes, for a normal size monster, I believe it is... Well, I have a case right here. Hey, sponsor, shout out. I got you, monster. Serving... Oh, no, they they changed theirs. Servings per container is one can now. Okay. Um... Where is... The caffeine content someone could argue there's a lot of things you could have a second serving of that won't kill you yeah no i'm just saying like from a perspective of like the company they say like oh yeah well the serving size recommendation is only half a can or whatever right so like that's kind of how they work around that anyways i want to get into this topic because this one's been sitting here for like a week and a half all right, I want to talk about moments and in internet history, and they don't have to be like huge moments. Like I would prefer to go for something sort of recognizable. Like it can be sort of niche, but it has to like be kind of big within that niche. I'm sorry to put my feet. Um, definitely the guy who's been cracking me up the most recently is emotional damage. He is funny, man. That was... Yeah, alright. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. I mean, that's more recent than I was going to go for. Further? Vine? I was, I was, I was going before Vine, actually. I... I wanted to talk about Boxy. I don't know who that is. So, Catherine Wayne, formerly known as boxy babe um it all start i forget like why it all started it basically started she made videos talking to her friends and posted them on youtube uh she made two videos addressing her friends on gaia online and uploaded them to youtube under the title or the alias as boxy babe and basically everybody was like, oh my god, she's so hot, she's so pretty, and she got internet famous because she made two videos for her friends on Gaia Online where she was just talking to them. Really? That's wild. Yeah, it got, it went like all over 4chan, and there, there were like multiple people. Like, there were two sides of this. Like, either people were all about Boxy, or people hated her because they found her, like, her voice was annoying or whatever, you know? She's, like, way too energetic or and all this stuff. I, I will say, if if we went back in time, all right, let's, let's travel back to, what, this would have been 2008? 2008 me would have said she was like the prettiest woman in the planet on the planet like if i'm being entirely honest i mean she's still very pretty but i mean she's yeah she's pretty for sure but yeah no she had that whole uh like emo punk haircut thing going on and she was uh i don't want to say like an uwu girl but like what what became before the uwu girl the ra the rar girls rar yeah the rar, rar girls. girls yeah she rar. was one of those <laughs> so like <laughs> like like animal lucius and stephanie Ooh, bleep that name out uh Ooh, we'll just bleep that whole segment but we'll have a good laugh about it cuz i know what you're talking about <laughs> yeah but yeah um so I remember the most profound video I remember is because it was the first freaking hilarious video I ever found on YouTube. Like my brother talked about YouTube and he's like, yeah, there's this thing called YouTube now and you can like see videos and post videos and it's 
funny. And I was like, cool. So I go in there, I look up cats. And I think it's the fucking coolest thing ever. <laughs> I found this video called Cat Flip. You can find it now. It is 10 seconds of pure hilarity. And it's basically this video where the cat tries to jump over a baby gate and literally flips itself over and slams on the floor. And I just thought it was the funniest video ever. I'm sure there's a million people out there who know exactly what video I'm talking about. You said it's called Cat Flip? Cat Flip. Oh, my goodness. It is not called Cat Flip anymore, or it is just out of the algorithm. Uh, I found, uh, like, a re-upload of it. Well, no, this was 16 years ago. Okay. Is it the one with the baby gate? Yeah. I did, I can't see that. It looks <laughs> like a cat flip. <laughs> he tries to jump over it, and then his hind legs like, get caught on one side, and he just flops over. Just bam. Dude, those Man, were those were about... simpler times in YouTube. That is back when YouTube had videos rated by stars. If you remember that, the old YouTube overlay. Uh, hell yeah. Okay. And and the homepage basically looked like a kind of like Craigslist in terms of like the way it was laid out. Yeah. Oh, this... this is a video worth your reaction. Now you feel free to announce what it is. Uh, this video, um, the cat is fine. <laughs> it's basically these three girls are sitting there doing their hair and a cat gets stuck in the lamp. I just, you sent it to me on Discord and I was like, wait, where is it? Uh, okay, I got it. At like 20 seconds. Oh, it's like marked where he gets stuck in the lamp. My cat's in the lamp. Sounds like a human. <laughs> Dude, what's what's funnier because like i've been in similar situations like that right yeah it's um, like what the fuck do you do like cats sometimes get stuck in things because they think they can fit through them and then they can't right and it happens with all sorts of pets and uh i've done i've had to get them out many times they always freak out and scream even though they're like not getting hurt they're just they're scared right the funnier part about that video is the girl's reaction to it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, like, pick sure. the lamp up and, like, throw it on the ground. The, the only reason it's not funny is because the cat got his foot stuck in the light socket where there was no light bulb and it was on. So that's why the cat was like, it sounded like a human. You got a visitor. You heard him. Oh, jeez. She's so cute. She's missing her front teeth now. Oh, did they fall out? Were um, were they excited about the uh, first snowfall of the year? Oh yeah, you know I have a story for this one. A long time ago, I always told you know I I always this isn't a long time ago. It's always put your stuff away, okay? And if you if you put your stuff away, you're gonna have them when you need them. And so the snow starts falling. She's like, I want to go outside. I said, get your boots. And she said, okay. And I knew she was thinking something. No boots. She only had one boot. By the way, it was underneath the bed. And uh, she went like three or four hours today really upset because she couldn't go outside. Because, man, I'm, it's principle. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to teach her that when you make a mistake, there are repercussions. I'm not punishing. I said I'm not punishing you, I said. I said, I said, this is you punishing you. So when you can find your boots, we can go. I found her boot in like five minutes. Put it <laughs> I found it. I said, go look in your room. 
<laughs> of <laughs> course. It. That's that's how my mom is too with like stuff. Granted, it's a little different now because I just you know I misplace things sometimes, and it's usually like I need to find this so I can go to work, you know. But like, what I don't know what it is about parents, but like whenever I lose something, I'll look for a couple minutes. If I can't find it by myself, I go find my mom because I know she's gonna find it in like three minutes. Tops, she's gonna know exactly where it's at. Like, she's just gonna walk into my room and be like, there it is. And I'll be like, all right. And then we save everybody a lot of time. <laughs> I swear, I remember, I remember things if I can tell, if I can, like, ask myself motive. Yeah. So, like, if, if I can investigate, like, like I'm investigating a person for theft or something, like, I have to, like, find some evidence from the past or, like, why I would have done something... I'll never remember where it is, mm. but like, why is it missing? What did I do last with it? And why would I have put it somewhere else? I will find something that way faster than I will thinking where I could put it. Yeah. Be tracing your steps or whatever. My thing is always my keys. And I don't know why I'd normally put them on like the key rack and that way they're there. Um, but like every now and again, I think, yeah, I have them right here. Like, I just, like, forget they're in my pocket, and I bring them down, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm not going to go back upstairs right now. I'll take them up later, and then I never do. And then I'm always like, man, where are my keys? <laughs> but I've always, I, I narrow it down to, like, two spaces. They're either on the key rack, on my desk, or maybe on my dresser. That's like the third spot. Like if mm -hmm. if it's not on my desk, then it's got to be on my dresser. I've started using my previous day's pants as the storing place for everything I need. I, I never take anything out of my pockets, <laughs> drop my pants on the floor, set it next to my bed. I get dressed in the morning, I pull everything out of my pockets, and I leave. I know, I know people that do that. It works pretty That's, well. It's it pretty works. effective. It really does. I haven't lost any of my wallet, my keys, anything in the morning in a long time. It's pretty effective until somebody picks up your pants and then washes them with your wallet and everything in them, so... Yeah, for sure. Uh, granted, it doesn't bother me as much anymore when, like, my wallet goes through the wash. Because I don't carry cash anymore. It was a bigger problem when I carried cash on me and, you know, I was younger and didn't have, like, a debit card. Because then, you know, my mom right. accidentally put my wallet through the washer because I forgot to take it out of my pants, you know? And I'm not, like, blaming her for it or anything. It's just one of those things, like, she didn't notice it was in there and she put it in the wash and now all that money's ruined. <laughs> yeah, dude, I remember I used to carry cash because I think I got paid in checks or maybe I just pulled my money or chose. I, I actually think I went and deposited my checks at Kroger. And I would get my cash, but I seriously, I'd lose hundreds in cash. I would lose hundreds of dollars, like, monthly, because I'd lose tens and twenties. Because I didn't spend it all, and I lost it, what I had left from that day, or whatever. I'm glad I spent so much money on Magic the Gathering cards, because at least I got something out of it. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't carry cash anymore. I can't. But... You can definitely tell my debit card has been through the wash multiple times because, like, all the paint that they use for the numbers to make them pop from the background so they're easier to read, yeah, all that paint's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so it's literally just blue and then, like... I think my card's like that, too. When I scratchy looking and shit. When I go to read my card, I have to like put it like this close to my face so that I can tell what the numbers are. Good luck getting a photocopy. Yeah, no, I don't even try with that anymore. That whole like when you're like ordering food online and it's like scan your card and we'll put the info in for you. I don't even try that anymore. It's not gonna be able to see any of the numbers. But it's better than uh Carrying cash, going through the wash, and then not having money. So, it's the payoff. Okay. Um, oh, so I want to, like, kind of just bring this up, and then 
I know last episode we said we were going to do a whole thing on McCainy Manor for Halloween. Uh, Halloween kind of already passed. We weren't able to film the episode. And I also decided that uh, that doing that kind of thing would be better for like a video essay format as opposed to just like a podcast episode. Yeah, so, that would be really cool. Um, if that's something that like people want, I'll do it. But that's gonna people want. <laughs> it's gonna take a while to do that. You know, I might even watch the channel if we do that. <laughs> if you do that. You might you might watch some <laughs> of the content. I might even watch some of the content. <laughs> Honestly, I just don't like looking at my dumb face. Yeah, that's like one thing. Um I, I mean I obviously watch the content that I post on the channel because I do the editing, right? So mm -hmm. and uh when I'm doing that Basically, oh hey, my camera is completely frozen. I love that. That is so good for me. <laughs> All right, and we're back. And we're back. Yeah, I just had to unplug it and plug it back in. But uh, yeah, so I don't know what it was, but I I've had like issues with cameras from running multiple cameras. You know, so that I have different angles, you know, stuff like that. Or, like, when we're doing the podcast, that way you're not just looking at, like, the Discord icon. <laughs> you at least have something to look at. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, it used to not be that way for, for people who don't know. The first couple episodes, I did not have my second camera, so... When I was uh, talking with people, it was literally just my Discord icon, but everybody else got to see my actual face. Alright, uh, so we, we talked about the McCainy Manor thing. Uh, if you guys, if anybody wants that, we'll, we'll see about doing it. Um, there is one thing, I guess it's a little late... But we'll we'll talk about it anyway, cause cause who fucking cares at this point? What? I don't know. Something smelt weird. Um, I want to talk about haunted houses and most embarrassing moments. And I know, like, I think I kind of know, like, what moment you're gonna talk about, and that's why I wanted to talk about. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed about that. I just will not admit that one on uh, <laughs> on here. <laughs> if, it, if it makes you feel any better, I did it too, so. <laughs> not that one. There's a different one. Oh, okay. No, the one that's the one I was thinking of. Okay. So I went to prom with my girlfriend at the time. Her name was Claire. So me and Oh, this Claire... is a completely different one than what I was talking about. Yes. Yes, okay. it is. It, me and Claire were at prom, and this is way more embarrassing. I can't believe I'm going to even, even say this. All of a sudden, you have you have an out. You could have just told the other story. I'm, not, I'm already in it. I'm already in it. Okay. I would rather say this one. So all of a sudden, uh, we had plans. We were going to go to prom, leave early at 10 o'clock. We were going to go to the Haunted Woods from 10 to 12 or 12.30 or something. And I was going to take her home, and then her dad was going to pick her up or whatever. So this was uh, basically the day I had to man the up. And basically, we were at prom. I was dancing around, and all of a sudden, I experienced horrendous testicle pain. And so, you know, I'm thinking like blue balls, right? But this is like someone grabbed your nuts and just started pulling it off like just the nut itself and it was like so bad but i'm like probably red in the face the whole time i'm like oh, oh, oh. but i'm just you know <laughs> i'm in my mind i'm like straight face and chill and it's <clears throat> the whole time and we're going we we leave early because i said i was excited to go so we left after like an hour at prom so it was like nine o'clock when we left because obviously i was in pain so we left i figured i could like gather myself a little bit and we go over to uh we go over to the uh the haunted woods 
I'm walking around the haunted woods. Oh my God, man. She is jumping all over the place and scared and stuff. She's shaking me up. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. And all of a sudden, I feel, I'm feel i feeling a heartbeat. Just <laughs> like <laughs> through the tissue of my, of my body. And, <laughs> and uh, we finally made it to the car. I shared a nice kiss with her. I believe it was our like second. Nah, it was a real first kiss for sure. And um, take her home. And I'm like, bye. You know, our dad picks her up. And I'm like down the street from my house. Her dad pulls out of the driveway. I go in the house. And I'm like, ah, my balls hurt. I'm like laying on the floor. I'm like, I don't know what's wrong. Oh my God, my balls hurt. My dad's like, you gotta show me, Steve. You gotta show me, man. And I'm like, I'm showing him, and the shit's just like, I got a lump like that big on the side of my shit. And he's like, yeah, we gotta go to the hospital. Well, it turns out there's like these like like boot shaped pieces of flesh or something that like you know your ball's not perfectly round. It's tissue. There's gonna be stuff like hanging off or whatever, like old capillaries from development i don't exactly know what they are but after i developed they basically were in the right it was in the right spot and my nut had rubbed it off one just from dancing like the nuts rubbing together like that it's like rubbing a callus off and the blister starts to burst you know and that's what happened it was very embarrassing because i had to show my father my pecs <laughs> That was a way better story. Than... <laughs> Dude, that wasn't like, like that wasn't even like about haunted houses or anything. Like the haunted house was there, but it was not the focus of this. Stuff. Uh, I mean, I went to a lot of haunted house. I mean, we went to the haunted woods all the time. I mean, the embarrassment <laughs> was just—it was like always existing because my fucking cock hurt so bad and so constantly, <laughs> and I wanted to say. I have to go home. And then she'd be like, why? I'd be like, my dick hurts. No, I can't do that. I was embarrassed <laughs> the whole time. Like, Oh God. No, I was, I was going to tell the story of when you, me and your wife went <laughs> to, uh, the hayride and bog, uh, near here. If, if you want to, if you want me to tell that story, I can. You know what, man? You go feel free. I just don't want the internet thinking things. You know what? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think things are already thought. I think it's kind of beyond salvaging at this point. We might as well just steer into the skid. <laughs> so All I'm saying is don't get in my face. <laughs> don't get in my face. So, uh, one year, me and Steven and his wife, and I don't know if, I don't think anybody else was there with us. I think it was just us three. I think there was going to be somebody else, and they canceled for whatever reason. I can't remember. Um, so we're all at the local Haunted Hayride and Bog, which a Bog is essentially just a Haunted Hayride, but you walk instead of riding on a tractor trailer which also i don't know why they're called hay rides you are not riding on hay those are straw bales ha. <laughs> but i guess haunted straw ride doesn't work as well so haunted hay ride just it rolls off the tongue better and that's probably why um so we're at the haunted hay ride and bug and we're all just hanging out having a good time and we get on the bog and we're starting to walk through and we get to this one spot where there's like an elevator kind of and i think it I was we were, i thought we were on a hay i thought we were on a hay ride we did do the hay ride as well but and the the moment i want to guy got in my face he jumped up there no 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 that that did happen but i want to talk about the moment on the bog oh, no, I, don't, I don't know about this You'll probably remember it when I bring it up. Oh fuck! Um, so How we're... embarrassing is this gonna be? It gets pretty embarrassing. Um, so 
we're on the bog and there's like this elevator kind of scene, right? Uh, I think it's to play on the fear of falling in an elevator, which is a very real, real fear. It probably only moved like one or two feet, you know, like it probably went down like one level. But the whole ride, it's going like this, and it's shaking, and it's going side to side, right? And it, it feels like you're falling. And the whole time, there's a guy who's running the elevator. Uh, and he's wearing all sorts of makeup. I don't know what he was supposed to be. Just kind of typical hayride stuff. Like, he just looks like a horror guy. <laughs> like, um, but it was somebody I went to high school with, and I knew him. And, uh... I forget what brought this on, but we started flirting with him, <laughs> as we do, <laughs> and he was flirting back, is the, is the crazier part, he was flirting back with us, and then somebody said, why don't you just kiss him, or something like that, and Steven, without hesitation, the man comes through for the people, he planted one right on his lips. <laughs> Bro, I thought that was on the hayride. No, that was on the bog. Now, I will say I did also give him a kiss as well, but mine was, like, on his forehead or something. The only time I ever remember that ever happening is when I was with you and Stephanie in a hayride, and they had jumped on the hayride, and they were just getting in people's faces. No, it and was like, it was on the bog. I remember. Well, I remember very specifically, and I remember gonna, who I'm it gonna, was. I'm to clarify this with Stephanie's tea time, because she needs to tell me that this happened. I, I, I remember very I specifically. Is when the, the dude was gray-faced, and he just, like, jumped in the back of the hayride. No, it was on the, it was on the bog. It, he he it was wearing a lot of gray makeup, but it was on the bog. His name was... And he was on the elevator in the bog. I knew it, I swear. This, this, it, was, it, was, it was in the hayride on the way to the bog. No, it was, it was on the bog, my guy. The hayride and the bog were completely different rides. They were not. Stephanie, come here. <laughs> come here. I need Stephanie's tea time, bro. No, we just need confirmation that this I need happened. Some confirmation. I need you to tell the story about the time I kissed the dude at the haunted place. We both did. Um. Tell the story. I don't remember. Was it in the hayride or was it in an elevator? Oh, it was in the hayride. Dude, I'm telling you, it was the haunted yeah, bog. It was like an accident, though, wasn't it? No. That one may have been an accident. There, there may be a second occurrence of this, but the one that I remember. The one I remember was very specifically, because we both did it, was on the bog. We kissed. And I went, Whoa. Oh, I remember now. Yeah, it was a hayride. Yeah, that, it was something weird with an elevator, too, but it wasn't you. Yeah, it was the bog. He just, like, got extremely close to it. No, he got in my face, and I went, <clears throat> Yeah, no, something Like, real happened. quick. Yeah, that was the hayride, but I remember something with the elevator, and I don't remember what it, it was. It was the bog. The bog was the elevator. The bog elevator? I feel like I remember flirting with someone. Dude. We we gotta call Tyler and ask him. Do you remember that time me and Steven kissed you on? Yes, <laughs> that would be awesome. You should get him on Tyler's tea time. Completely. I tell the story. It, it, it wasn't a wasn't anything serious though. It was, as my friend John would say, we're just homosexuals. <laughs> Homosexual. You only flirt with the homies. I don't know what it was, what what it was with our generation, but you know what? Internet, stop me if I'm crazy. But were we super fucking gay in like <laughs> like junior high to high school? I think like, everybody kind of went through that phase like, a little bit. Yeah, where... like there was a game at school on the playground where they go pee pee touch, and they like like not not hard, but like. Flat palm someone's crotch and run away. Dude, uh, 
I mean, I remember we would like nut tap each other all the time. <laughs> it was the same. It was like the same thing. But like when you nut tap your boy, you're not like trying to hurt him, hurt him. You're just trying to give them, give it a little jolt, you know. Like, <laughs> so, he, so he knows they're there. You know. Oh God, dude! I I have a story, and I don't know if I could tell it. <laughs> stuff like that and yeah it's always it's always like that it's 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 just guys being dudes you know, yeah, you know we can even take it a step further and be like what's the evolutionary reason guys mack on each other's junk and make jokes about it dude it's the de-evolution of man i'm telling <laughs> what if cavemen used to do that shit because they the, needed to know how how competitive they needed to be like how big is this cost the the more men you trap in a room together, like the closer they get to like dragging their knuckles and carrying clubs. Like I swear, <laughs> it's like, and then it, 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 the funny part about it is, um, cause cause we do this right, like when we all get together, like we all just become idiots, and then we'll go from that to like making dick and fart jokes to like having an intellectual conversation. And then back to, like, dick and fart jokes. <laughs> and it's just amazing. <laughs> you Just the transition, I swear. If anybody else was in the room, not, like, participating, but, like, a fly on the wall kind of thing, they would have just been like, what's happening? Yeah. I don't, they, I don't know these people. <laughs> I thought they, I knew these people. They were talking about dick and fart jokes, and now they're talking about particle accelerators? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Accelerators. <laughs> Dude, actually, what would happen if you took like the 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 colliders, right? Like the the big things, and they spin atoms around. What would happen if you just farted in one of those and then turned it on? Would the particles like collide to each other and make like a fart explosion? A new atom. <laughs> <A new Adam. laughs> Somebody needs to test that, and if we get like a new Adam or something out of it, I want it named after me. Yeah, right. But you guys the here, Josh the Josh Adam. It'd be called a a, a Kemp Kemp uh, Kempsicle. Kemp Kempfanium. Kempfanium. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I try not to put my last name on the internet, but it's already kind oh, of known. No. no, it's already known. Like. I don't, like, say it a lot, but, like, if you do, like, ten minutes of research, you can find it. It's not hard. For real. Yeah. Yeah. Just search search my picture, and you'll find it. Uh, or if you have, like, the, um, if you use, like, the Wayback Machine, you can actually find it a lot easier. Um, for another quickie, another quickie. We're always down for quickies. I still don't know if I can tell that football story. If I'm being entirely honest, I think that one's getting cut, and that's gonna be uh just for us. <laughs> so, if you don't mind, I was gonna segue. I love um, segues. So, a team of scientists has repurposed living cells. They scraped uh, from frog embryos and assembled them into a new identity. Basically, they're a millimeter wide. They gave them the name Xenobots. And the first thing that they started to do, by the way, when they were creating these things, they used a computer to uh, map real world physics using fluid dynamics, surface tension, gravity and one more thing i don't remember um but they basically had input it and uh the machine was going to input how they need to shape it and in order for this uh tissue to move on its own so this came from the 2010 to beyond research where they started mixing like microplastics with rat heart tissue frog heart tissue and just by stimulating it with electricity, they could uh, make it move. But mm. now they're at the point to where they took these embryos, they used tiny little cauterizers and knives 
to shape and form them the way that the computer had mentioned. And um, when they had shaped them up, they started to act on their own. They were able to move. Um, and the crazy part is they were able to work together. They added a, a particle. I don't know exactly what it was. It was some sort of like dust. I don't know. Um, but the way they acted was they would work together to pile them up, these particles up around. Mm. And uh, that's, that's as far as they got. And with a little bit more research um, and a little bit more study, they noticed that the, the, the bots started changing, the xenobots started changing. Um, they, they started to be able to heal on their own. Um, they were able to not only just work together, um, but they would like make piles when they switched out uh the particle that i don't remember what it was the, the matter that was inside the test area uh with stem cells they started collecting the stem cells the froggy stem cells in the same manner and the collection is done based on like a probability factor they gave it a certain movement and they gave it a certain environment they introduced these stem cells and they would or they were able to like basically program it to do the spinning thing and they would like scoop these piles up. And the craziest part about all of this is they started to reproduce. Those piles of just stem cells were able to turn into the xenobots themselves and continue working together. Um, you, you know what this reminds me of? Mm. Uh, I don't know if you're as big of a fan of Futurama as I am, uh, but... Yes. episode i think it was in season six or season seven where farnsworth says i don't his infamous i don't want to live on this planet anymore <laughs> and then he goes to a different planet and he uses nanobots to clean the water and then the nanobots end up evolving and like you see the whole evolution play out uh from like dinosaurs all the way to people and then, like, they're in the wild, and, like, basically, who was, um, who was the lady that went and lived with, uh, gorillas? Wasn't Jane Fonda. Somebody else. I know this story, but I have no Woman idea. Woman who lived with gorillas. I can't remember her name. What was it? It wasn't Diane Fossey. Was it Diane Fossey? I thought her name's Jane Goodall. Jane Goodall was the one that I was thinking of. They had the robot version of Jane Goodall come in and she like throws a net over Fry and he goes, yeah. wow, nice net. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I love Fry. Fry is like honestly the best character in Futurama. As much as I like Bender and I like Professor Farnsworth and all the other characters, Fry is like the uh, yeah, guy. Yeah, Fry has so much background. He's like, yeah, he's the guy. He's he's the best. And he he's so funny. Like just every like even though like the jokes are mostly at his expense, like when they're talking about talking birds and they're like, "Are you sure they didn't just learn it, you know, as a parlor trick?" like fry and he goes like fry like fry <laughs> so just like those just like those robots that cleaned up that pond that professor started yeah uh, that's what they're trying to do with these things that's exactly what they're trying to do with these things um they they last about seven days they can reproduce um they they're completely biodegradable and what they want them to do is start collecting microplastics and oil Dude, this and is like maybe program to eat it. This is like the beginning of the movie Wally. -E. <laughs> yeah. Wow. -E. <laughs> so yeah. Eva. I that was really yeah, dude, that that sounds like the beginning of the movie Wally, -E, and I'm not sure how I like that. That sounds like the beginning of the movie Wally. -E. I'm glad that it doesn't. I'm glad that the world doesn't look like the beginning of the movie Wally. -E. Well, not yet. Uh, at least we're making Wally before it's too late for him. You know what I mean? 
True. That I'm I hoping. guess that is the silver lining of it all. I'm hoping. It would be really awesome if this worked out because if they say what they say they can do and introduce it to the whole ocean, yeah, um, then that would be cool. But like, what's the negativity? Like, what if these things start to eat the oil out of fish? Or what if I don't know? Just... Yeah, <clears throat> that's the problem. If they can evolve, right? Like you kind of hinted, they were doing some sort of evolution. Yeah, yeah, if, absolutely. If if they can evolve, where do they stop? Where do they stop evolving? You know, so well, like Well, and hopefully it would be a crazy insight on how life was created somehow. They could use uh I mean, they actually used embryos, so it really doesn't explain that either. I mean, cuz that you didn't have a pre-life thing yeah. that built life. So it, it's <clears throat> It's interesting, at the very least, to mm -hmm. see how that will all play out. For but sure. Maybe actually, we can use it maybe someday for terraforming. Potentially. Dude, just nuke Mars. Nuke Mars already. Dude, I, I, of, I didn't... There's a lot of debate about that. Yeah. I didn't understand nuke Mars until somebody like explained it to me. And basically, it was that, like, the gases in a nuclear bomb would create a sort of ozone, which would form... Yeah, if they were to do the, the ice caps or whatever, they could, yeah. possibly. But the, they were also saying that the energy from the nuclear blast would absolutely send most all of those particles into space, because there's almost no gravity. Yeah. Not like you experience on Earth. It's like, the, the atmospheric pressures... Pushes I think it's like stuff back down. ...percent of what it is here. And yeah. then it's also gravity's kind of like a lot lower, and there's really nothing in the way for them to bump into to stay on the planet. Yeah, it's so, kind of how do you how do you create an ozone when there's like no gravity? By installing machines that mine the coal inside of it, or whatever carbon compounds are in it, and it and burns then burns, it burns into the, the carbon compounds. But when yeah, that's actually a really reasonable way to do it. So, it takes so long. I was going to say the problem, yeah, that it would take long and uh, I don't know how the the specifics of all that. I'm not a, I'm not a science man. <laughs> right. Nuke Mars is a really interesting idea for sure. We'll, we'll have to talk with uh, our friend about that because he's actually... Uh, Eric? No. Eric? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He is a nuke Mars fanatic, and also got a promotion. No, uh, oh, I thought, I thought, I thought you were just t throwing out a random name and like winking at me, as we oh, all no, knew. Eric, Eric, uh, I'm not gonna say his last name, um, but he became. Well, I mean, I guess you can figure out who he is from here. He became the lead launch coordinator for uh, Tesla. Okay. And, or for for SpaceX. And uh, so he's like literally working on that. I bet you he would love to be on a podcast. I, I was going to say Darren because um, I can't remember if his degree is in biological engineering or biological medicine. Um, I know basically his degree is finding out why cells interact with each other the way they do kind of mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So he might know a little more about this subject than we would. It's crazy. All the thoughts in our brain are intertwined in an ecosystem of billions and trillions of different cells, of different living creatures, with living organisms. Uh, you, you want you want to know the crazy a crazy thing that like I thought of the other day? Mm -hmm. The computers, right? The computers that we're both sitting at and recording this from are basically when you break it down, are rocks that we tricked into thinking. They are rocks that we flattened out, pumped electricity into, and tricked them into having thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, okay, so this is kind of a funnier one, and I think this will be, like, the, uh, the thing that we end on. Um... So the other day I was sitting around thinking and I went and asked a friend of mine's father whom used to be a pastor now he works uh, elsewhere uh, 
because it was better paying job, so he took it. But he has a lot of knowledge about, like, the Bible and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So I went up and I was like, hey, I have a question. He's like, all right. And I was like, all throughout the Bible, it is mentioned that Jesus was a carpenter. Not mm -hmm. once is it mentioned if he is a good carpenter. <laughs> well, I mean... And I was uh, like... perfect. I was like, and that's basically what he um, he went back on is that, like, based on the Bible saying, not that he was perfect, well, yeah, basically that he was perfect, um, that he would have excelled at being a carpenter as well. But I, I, I did crack a joke of, like, could you imagine if you're, like, w way back then and you're like, thank God that whole Messiah thing worked out because he built a shed for my cousin and what a piece of shit that was <laughs> but he did say that um when it comes to like carpentry or like beauty or anything right it's all in the eye of the beholder so he may have made something for something somebody else that he perceived as like perfect or the way that it should be made and they thought it was crappy so they may have thought that he was a really bad carpenter Maybe. Um, I will say he was probably a jacked person because to be a carpenter back in those days, you were also retrieving your own lumber and building everything, delivering everything and whatnot. And one day he came into a synagogue that was being used. No, it was, he came into a temple that was being used as a, uh, like a gambling place. People were whoring and everything else you could think of. A brothel. And, and he came in, he lets the goats out, he lets the doves out, and he comes and he flips over the table. And, like, the table was described to be, like, a solid piece of wood, I believe. And it was probably, it was probably one piece of wood, and they were probably massive tables. I just imagine this this guy coming in all calm and then flipping over the table, like, okay, are you listening? Like the Giga Chad guy? Oh, terrifying. The Giga Chad guy? <laughs> Flip's table refuses to elaborate. <laughs> oh, he elaborated. And the thing is, also, it wasn't out of anger. Um, that's why I stress in putting in the fact that he let the goats and the doves out before he did anything. It's the equivalent of dropping a book in a classroom so your kids go, huh? Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't have to be mad to be loud and get a bunch of people's attention. Did something else that came up about the Bible that we were having questions of. Uh, and there, there's no necessarily answer to it. Um, in, in, in the book of Genesis, uh, which is obviously the story of Adam and Eve and the fall from the garden and all that, right? Mm -hmm. um, it is said that... God took the legs from the serpent to force it to crawl on its belly. Right? And uh, what else has legs? A snake. Every single snake on the fucking planet has legs. Look it up. They're like nubs. They're like, they don't work anymore. Yeah, so... so no, the, know... the, question, the question wasn't, um, did it take away its legs? It was, well, actually it was, did it take away its legs? Um, or was the serpent always a serpent and that taking away its legs was more metaphorical? Um, I'm pretty sure he used the serpent uh, to get in Adam and Eve's mind and to not be that serpent. The serpent was no longer an influence on Adam and Eve. He couldn't follow them out of the Garden of Eden. They continued to do their practices and Satan's influence spread through the world. But um, it it was so. more it was the question of did snakes have legs and then they were taken away, or was it metaphorical? Like could and and they went through I, and they did all these like depictions of what it could have looked like. And granted, they they, I mean, it was very much a snake, but it had legs, and it kind of like funny have you ever seen that. a uh, like a monitor lizard? Yeah. How they they have legs, or or a, like an alligator or a crocodile, right? They have legs, but they spend a lot of their time on their belly and kind of like dragging themselves, kind of. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like that, 
So it was it was very like interesting because there is no real answer to it. Like of... I think I think there are two fantastic answers, and that's when the first off when you when you actually look at snakes, it's like a well, obviously snakes had their legs taken away. Um, which I think is really funny is kind of like a like if I were God, I'd throw that in there for like a huh. huh well, it was cool. to um to and, make and them crawl it, on their belly because crawling on your belly was being as like a sign of being um like scum of the earth kind of yeah and then and then at the same time as a uh for for real like I mean, like I said, like a, a real answer would be so that they could not be followed. Um, the metaphorical answer would be, yeah, to disarm him. And, uh, I mean, I don't know. I think, I think there's, there's, there's three answers. One explaining he used it to show people as like, check out these snakes. Now I said they had their legs taken off and people really just discovered the fact that snakes ever had legs. And then, yeah, the, the physical and mental but factor of disarmament. It was really, it was really interesting because there's no, there is no specific way to say like yes or no, right? When we I, say I think it is what exactly it says. If it says he took away his legs, he took away his legs. But that's not how the Bible always is. See, that's the thing, right? There's a lot of things um, that are metaphorical so, and perceived. So it's, it, it's, it's all about really, like how you perceive it, right? Like how you interpret it. A lot. My church discusses this a lot. Um, nothing's really left up to interpretation because, I mean, it says what it says. Everything's really obvious, and a lot of people will take it out of context to justify certain things, um, like what this means to you kind of thing, uh, is very damaging to the culture. And, like, a lot of people will just take it, this, well, that's what it means to me. And I don't I... totally jump away from the church on that. And it's really hard for me to find an actual, like, metaphor i mean like the crazy ones of dreams and stuff the burning like, bush oh, that happened it was a it was actually a burning a bush that was burning and the, god's voice came from it i don't think there was a metaphor from it at all so i i actually, always perceived that as a metaphorical burning bush what was the metaphor i just i just see power sitting in life and uh there was a cave and there was a burning bush inside of it. Which did you see um, eye grabbing? So of course so he's gonna walk in and talk to it. They did um, they did some like I don't want to say it's hard to go back and like look at like things in the Bible and say oh this is what that was right, um, but they have a reason to believe that the burning bush was a certain type of plant, and it was a uh, DMT, basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't say he smoked up anything, but definitely uh, the bush is on today, fire. <laughs> like, yeah, plants today spontaneously combust every single day. This is what starts brush fires. Look at no further than a eucalyptus tree. There's also a lot of bushes that do it. There's a ton of bushes that do it, and it's just because the oil inside gets too hot and it yeah. catches on fire. So it's not like unheard. Of. No, I'm not saying like it didn't like spontaneously combust, but they believe that the bush was, I forget what the plant was, but it is a similar experience to t having d taking DMT. So they believe that he was tripping with talking to the burning bush and like whether you believe that or not, but it's it's just kind of funny. I find it interesting. It's interesting when yeah, it's it's interesting when people yeah. It's definitely a detractor. Mm. The guy was a pretty pure dude and didn't believe in doing drugs or alcohol. He believed in a sober mind, Moses. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not saying he was... did or not. I'm just saying that they they were looking right. in to see that if the burning bush was in fact DMT, and he may have not knowingly smoked it or whatever, Maybe. right? If he like, Maybe. if it just spontaneously combusts and Maybe. he's there, he's gonna get high, right? Like, oh, that's... yeah, it takes a massive chemical process usually to break that stuff down. Like, they were surprised that even the uh, Aborigines, I don't know what native culture it was that discovered it. They were, I, I mean, they could have discovered it, but historically, no one really found. 
the chemical process really early in time, except with those people in the woods that uh, used to cook it up in South America. Um, but I mean, it was, it's totally a thing for sure. Mm. I think there's a root that has a lot of DMT in it that might, might be potent enough, but I'm pretty sure they still have to brew it and make this whole tea out of it and stuff. Flame could destroy that. I would be surprised to see a bush that was that potent and full and deep, full of DMT. I'd have to like, look it up and get the exact article again, but I remember reading a while ago that they theorized i'm gonna say theorized because again we can't prove one way or another but they theorized that the burning bush was full of dmt i love that the bible is a big huge historical fact checker i mean they use the bible to cite if cities existed we actually found the existence of another city through the bible it was only mentioned in the bible ever we found a document in like 2018 in a completely different area that was buried in the catacombs of somewhere that mentioned the same city. And it was like, ah. I think people love to make the Bible not sound historical. Um, so I'm trying, to, yeah. I'm trying to think. Um... How much is 193 centimeters? I have no idea. In feet? Okay, 6.3 feet. Okay. So, uh, recently, they have started discovering, quote-unquote, giant remains, right? Um, mm -hmm. yeah. And this is all perspective to the time that these remains would have existed. So, 4,000 years ago... Um, or, like, even if you go back to, like, uh, the Napoleonic era, right? People were traditionally smaller. Um, that's why everybody, when they when they talk about Napoleon, they're always like, oh, he was so short. But the thing you got to keep in mind about Napoleon, he was average height for the time. I didn't know that. I thought he was, like, pretty short. For no, punishment. he was average height for the time. It's a very common misconception about him that he was really <laughs> short. It's just... The fact in the matter is just everybody back then was shorter than they tend to be today. So when I'm saying they're finding giant remains, I'm not talking about they're finding these massive skulls to well, people like that were foot, like nine and ten foot tall bodies. Yeah, they're finding bodies from like 4000 years ago or, you know, 3000 years ago that are somewhere between anywhere from like six to ten feet tall. Which, even by today's standards, 10 feet tall. You're a fucking giant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the craziest part is it happens where David's escapades were. That's where we found these giants. And they're scarred with what looks like they were hit with stone. And uh, so J David was in a group of giant slayers. And they actually found, like, a massive group of giants that died at the same exact time. And they were exterminated. Like... It's a really interesting story. Yeah, so it's here's definitely... um here's an article about one that was found in ancient Rome. Uh and they have a picture of a tibia, which is a uh, part of your calf, right? It's one of the bones in your calf. And they found this guy's complete skeleton. So it's not just like they found one piece. They found the whole thing. Uh but they took a picture of a tibia of somebody that was considered normal height for the time and this person's tibia the quote-unquote giant's tibia is about twice as long Oof. i have to go help my wife uh okay yeah the babies so. are throwing fits all right but i'm gonna we'll, 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 we'll wrap this up so that's been right. this episode of the loosey goosey oh, pod oh, okay. And uh, we will catch you guys in the next one. Hell yeah. Later. Peace.